السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله Dear brothers and sisters, Ramadan Mubarak. May Allah make this a blessed month for all of you. Uh, I want to go over with you in the next few minutes over matters related to Salat al-Taraweeh. Taraweeh prayers for this Ramadan, for this stay at home Ramadan. And uh, it's important because many of you are used to praying in the masjid and there may be certain things that you are not aware of. There are a lot of people have been asking questions. There are certain things that need to be clarified. So I want to talk about these matters. I'm going to share with you, um, by and large, from a fatwa that was um, produced by uh, the American Muslim Jurist Association, AMJA, and go through some of the material that they mentioned uh, because it's very, very beneficial. So first of all, uh, it's important to note that taraweeh is what is called sunnah mu'akkada. It is a uh, recommended sunnah act. Um, it is a um, uh, an act that our beloved Prophet وسلم, would engage in, in the hadith uh, that's related in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. The Prophet وسلم, he said, مَنْ قَامَ رَمَضَانْ إِيمَانًا وَحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ That the one who stands up in prayer uh, during the nights of Ramadan uh, with sincere faith and hoping a reward from Allah, then all of their sins will be forgiven. So alhamdulillah, a great opportunity for us this Ramadan. So that's number one. Number two, um, praying taraweeh, prayer in the masjid is also sunnah mu'akkada, is also a very highly regarded sunnah act. Um, there is a difference of opinion between the ulama, you know, should... Uh, uh, should we pray taraweeh individually? Is that more superior, praying it individually at home versus praying it in congregation at the masjid in jama'ah? Um, the correct opinion, wallahu alam, is that praying it in with a jama'ah in the masjid is superior than praying it uh, individually at home. And this is the, the majority opinion held by most. Um, but it is also important to note that performing taraweeh Prayer is in congregation in jama'ah in the masjid is not a condition for the validity of your prayer. Right? Your prayer is still valid if you pray it uh, at home or anywhere else, whether individually with other people. Um, and this is something that is established by Sayyidah Aisha in the, in the hadith related in Bukhari and Muslim, where uh, the Prophet Sallallahu as Sayyidah Aisha said, was the first to establish praying taraweeh in a congregation in the masjid. He prayed it that way for about three or four nights. Then he stopped um, and he explained because he, he was fearful that it would, the, his ummah would think that it is an obligation for them that is fard for them. Um, so what that we understand from that is the Prophet ﷺ would reclude back into his home and certain nights he would pray uh, there individually. The third point, um, due to our current cir circumstances, uh, because we are in the, in the middle of a global pandemic, there have been, uh, of course, restrictions placed on gatherings that we must uh, follow. And we are responsible for following those guidelines, um, even if that means that we can't go to the masjid. And most of the masjid, as you all know, are closed. Uh, fourth, it is um, uh, we should know that for those that are unable to pray taraweeh inside of the masjid, which is all of us, that we can pray it at home. And we can pray it individually. We can pray it in congregation with our, the members of our household. And in fact, we hope that if we do it with the right intention, then we will earn a, a reward that is multiplied because we are praying at home and because we were prevented from going to the masjid. And we were used to, we were accustomed to, to praying in jama'ah. Uh, inshallah, we will have a reward uh, for uh, a full reward and perhaps even more inshallah ta'ala and then there will be of course an additional reward for those that lead their families in prayer the one that is actually leading the prayer so alhamdulillah um, we are no you know in no shortage uh, we are not falling short in terms of uh, the reward inshallah that we will gain uh, this ramadan with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
Um, and you know, the Prophet ﷺ, he used to pray taraweeh in his home, as we said. The companions would pray taraweeh individually. Uh, sometimes they would gather in small groups um, until Sayyidina Umar, uh, during the time of his khilafah, he gathered them under one uh, imam. Um, fifthly, it's important to note that completion of the recitation of the Qur'an in taraweeh prayer is not a must. Uh, it, it is not a must that you finish the whole Qur'an during the whole month of Ramadan, um, you know, in your taraweeh prayer. But it is preferred uh, whenever is possible. And the evidence for that is, of course, Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam, he would come down and he would review with the Prophet sallam, the Qur'an, during the month of Ramadan, uh, once a year, um, and in the year when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi passed away, he reviewed it with him twice. And so, um, our, our uh, Salaf al-Salih, the, you know, the, our righteous predecessors, the people that came before us, our great scholars, they took this as, a, um, as their way. And so it has always been practiced in the Ummah of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that uh, people would strive to complete the Qur'an once, uh, in their taraweeh prayer and sometimes even beyond that more than one one khatam so um, that is something to uh, do our best uh, if we can however it is permissible to recite shorter surahs in our prayer we don't have to read one full juz we can read what we know from memory um, and uh, we can repeat even the same verses over and over you can even read the same surah uh, in one raka, in the same, and then in the second raka, you can even read the same surah again. That is also um, accessible uh, according to our individual capacity and ability. Allah does not place a burden on a soul more than it can bear. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَقْرَأُوا مَا تَيَسَرَ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ Read that which is easy for you from the Qur'an. Um, uh, so it is permissible to repeat the, the surah, the same ayat in both uh, uh, rakahs, as we said. Um, and you can compensate for maybe knowing less Qur'an by making extra dua, making extra tasbih, prolonging your ruku', prolonging your sujood, um, making sure that you have an extra level of khushu' in your salah. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. Um, Let's see, um, you know, there was a man uh, who, is, and this is related in Sahih al-Bukhari, and the hadith is narrated by Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, uh, that uh, Abu Sa'id, he would hear a man re repeating Surah Al-Ikhlas, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ, in uh, multiple times in his prayer. And... Uh, the next morning he goes to Rasulullah Sallallahu and he says, Ya Rasulullah, I saw this man and you know he was repeating it again and again as if he was belittling what he was doing. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, by him in whose uh, hand is my soul, he swears on Allah, this surah is equal to one third of the Qur'an. So do not feel that you've done less if, you're, if, you, if you only know short surahs and, and you cannot read, you cannot make your taraweeh longer. Sixth, according to the more correct view of the ulama, the person who is praying taraweeh, whether you are leading others as, as an imam or while you are praying alone, uh, you are allowed to read from a mushaf. You are allowed to read from a copy of the Qur'an. And this is the opinion of the majority of scholars of, of Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, uh, Imam uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and even the two companions of Al Imam Abi, Ab, Abu Hanifa, um, uh, Imam Muhammad and Imam Abu Yusuf. This is also their opinion. Uh, that you are allowed to read from the Mus'haf, you are allowed to read from the Qur'an during uh, the prayer. Directly, you can, you can keep the, uh, the Mus'haf on a stand and uh, with minimal movement, uh, you, you can read from it. Um, and this is, uh, there is the hadith that's related by uh, Imam al-Bukhari um, that where he, he narrates that there was a, a man by the name of the Kwan, uh, who used to lead Sayyida Aisha radiallahu anha in Ramadan, and while Sayyidina the Kwan would be 
reading from a, a mushaf. Number um, seven uh, is that it is not permissible for a, a woman to lead a man in taraweeh prayer, um, according to the correct opinion amongst the ulama. Um, even if the man she is leading is mahram to her, for example, her husband, her son, or something like that, even if they have that relationship with her, she is not allowed to lead them. Imam al-Shafi'i, he said um, that if a woman were to lead men, other women and male children in prayer, then the prayer of the woman who's leading would be valid. How uh, And the other women that she's praying with, their prayer would be valid. However, the prayer of the men and the male children would not be valid. So she can lead other women. Uh, a woman can lead other women. Um, or children who are who are not baligh, who are, uh, or who are not mumayyiz, sorry, who are not, uh, who are under the age of, of um, seven or eight years old, they can also be led. And in prayer, um, and Sayyida Aisha, Sayyida uh, uh, Um Salama, the wives of the Prophet ﷺ, they were known to lead other women in prayer as related in the hadith by Ad-Daraqutni and Al-Bayhaqi. Number eight, it is not correct to pray behind a remote imam. Uh, even if the prayer is being broadcast live with video and audio via television or internet, um, this is something that is not acceptable. The only exception would be if that is within within one setting, within the masjid, for example, on the first floor, the imam is praying. On the second floor, you have the television broadcasting what the imam is praying. But there it's taking place in the same place. Um, and the reason, and this is not to discourage the use of technology, but it should be done in the proper way as the sharia uh, allows it. Uh, and the reason for that is the following. Um, number one, uh, when when this sort of virtual, as it's being called, taraweeh takes place, um, that uh, this uh, the implication of jama'a is that it should ne it necessitates that the people are praying in the same place, not at the same time. People have to be in the same place, not at the same time. And uh, the second reason is that this form of prayer goes against the objectives for which the Sharia legislated congregational prayers. Um, we're not walking to the masjid to get there. It's not bringing unity and harmony uh, amongst the Muslims by coming to the same place to pray and so forth. Um, that's part of uh, the, the reason of Salatul Jama'ah. Also, it is not permissible to pray and the gaps between the rows are uh, are so huge. Um, they can be in different cities, in different countries, even and and still and but that would not be acceptable. And even if somebody claims, well, we're only doing it within our um, immediate community, that also would not be acceptable because there's buildings and roads dividing them, uh, and so forth. Um, and this, you know, and no one has said from long ago, TV and tele uh, television, radio has, has been around for a long, long time. No one has ever come with this opinion before that you can do it uh, virtually. Um, and so there is no there is no reason why that would come now. And there are other reasons as well um, uh, as to why that is not a valid way to make the taraweeh prayer. Um, so... That's those are some things as relates to taraweeh. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this uh, taraweeh a beautiful experience for us this Ramadan. I personally look forward to leading my, my own family in prayer and I look forward to that experience. So I encourage all of our dear brothers to do the same. Or if you live in individuals where you are single, um, you are going to pray individually. If you have multiple women in the home and there are no men, uh, then uh, then you can pray with each other. Whatever your household looks like, please try to establish that within uh, your your household and your particular context. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us all. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.